And uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome to tonight's presentation on the Kit Houses of Kalamazoo. Um, I'm Andrew Much, and this is my wife. Wendy. <laughs> Please join us as we travel back in time to circa 1926 in a rural farming community known as Novi Township. What do you have there, honey? Well, you know how we've been talking about finding a bigger place to rent? Yes. I was talking to Bert Monroe today, and he told me about how he built his own place. You know that big house up the road? Yes, but surely we couldn't afford to have a new house built, could we? That's the thing. Did you know that he ordered all the materials from Sears and put it together himself? What? No. Absolutely he did. I could do that too. Look at this handsome one here, the Hamilton. Oh, that is nice. Look at the list of materials that it includes. It's everything necessary to build a proper house, all guaranteed by Sears Roebuck. And it says right here that we can buy it on payments, even cheaper than it would be to rent a smaller place. Really? Then I think we should do it. Okay, I'll fill out this form here and we'll be on our way to a brand new home. Oh honey, that's wonderful. I can't wait. But I do have one question. Yes? Will ours have a bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward to 2015, it's probably hard for many of us today to imagine being a young couple in their 20s, carefully selecting from a catalog a home like the Hamilton, and then sending off their hard-earned dollars to buy, sight unseen, the promise of a new home. This promise would arrive in a railroad boxcar filled with over 10,000 pieces of lumber, parts, and paint, which would have to be unloaded and hauled by truck or wagon down dusty dirt and gravel roads to the future home site. There, the couple with the help of family and friends and their own skills, hard work, and perseverance and a 75-page book of instructions <laughs> would turn that boxcar full of parts into their future home. For hundreds of thousands of families, the story of the Hamilton is their story, a story that was repeated across America as families took this leap of faith in the pursuit of the dream of home ownership. When I purchased our home in 2003, I didn't know much about kit houses. I learned it was a Sears kit house from information that had been passed along by previous owners. I was fortunate that over the years the previous owners had taken such good care of the house that almost all the original details of the home remained. And if I had any doubts, I simply had to open the Sears Modern Homes catalog to find that even down to the smallest details, it was a perfect match. Mm -hmm. But our interest in the history of the home really took hold after a visit two years ago from Ron Salo. You see, Ron's parents built our, 19, our house in 1926. Ron told us how his parents, Floyd and Ruth Salo, with the help of Floyd's brother, Glenn, built the Hamilton on Taft Road in Novi. He explained how they had selected a reverse floor plan so that the windows in the living room and dining room would face south to take advantage of the natural light from the sun. He shared photos of the house under construction from 1926 and photos of the family in their home. Here's Ron as a young boy on the front porch of our house. <laughs> and here he is in 2013 on the same front porch. It was a wonderful opportunity to learn about the history of our home firsthand, but we realized that there are thousands of homes that share our history and we wanted to learn more. We've made it our mission to find kit homes around Michigan and share the stories of these homes. We hope that after tonight's presentation, you'll know a little bit more about kit homes and the kit ho homes in your community. So a uh, quick outline for tonight's presentation. We'll talk uh, first about the history of kit houses and how they came to be. Um, we'll also talk about Michigan's role in the kit house industry and, and it was a very important role um, and we'll explore that further. We'll also show you the process of buying and building a kit house and then uh, cover how to identify kit houses in your community. And finally, we'll take you on a tour of Kalamazoo kit houses and more. So let's get started. So first off, we're gonna start with a couple of definitions. Um, and we wanna explain first, what is a catalog house or what is a kit house? So when we, we, Wendy and I refer to a catalog or a mailer house, we're talking about a house that was based on plans offered by a catalog home manufacturer and that was built on site using or materials ordered from the manufacturer. Similar to that, but a little bit different, is the term kit house. 
These are versions of catalog or mail order houses that were built with pre-cut lumber. So all the framing lumber that arrived on site was cut exactly to size. And so like building a kit, a kit house. And finally, uh, you'll often hear people use the term Sears house um, as a description for any catalog or kit house. It really has become synonymous with catalog or kit houses. But as you'll learn tonight, Sears was not the only kit house manufacturer out there. So to get started, these are not kit houses. This is a manufactured home built in a factory, shipped on a trailer, oversized load going down the road. This is also not a kit house. This is a prefabricated house. Kit houses were, for the most part, not prefabricated. Everything showed up in pieces and parts, and you as the homeowner or contractor had to assemble it yourself. Nothing pre-made except windows and doors. So here are some examples of kit houses. This, or how about this, this. And as you can see, these houses came in a wide variety of sizes, a wide variety of architectural styles that reflected the popular tastes of the era when they were built. So in the early years, the first company to offer kit houses was the North American Construction Company that sold uh, homes under the brand name Aladdin. And we'll talk a little bit more about Aladdin in a few minutes. But Aladdin started offering pre-cut kit houses uh, by mail in 1906. They were the first company to do that. Um, Aladdin's uh, success was quickly noticed by a couple major mail order catalog companies Sears and Montgomery Ward, and they both started selling catalog homes a couple years later, uh, Sears in 1908, and Montgomery Ward under the Wardway brand in 1909. During these early years, uh, kit house sales actually really started to take off, and then World War I uh, broke out. And when that happened, home sales declined uh, across the board, not just for kit houses, but for all housing. And then came the Roaring Twenties, and it was the best of times for the kit home industry. As uh, soldiers and sailors returned from the Great War, there was a huge home building explosion across the country. Uh, also immigration contributed to that as well. And the suburbs in particular, along streetcar lines and railroad lines, really exploded. This is the era of the inner urbans and the streetcar suburbs. Um, Sears and Wardway both offered financing so that you could get a mortgage for your house from those companies to help you buy kit homes. And uh, at the peak of their sales, Sears was selling thousands of kit homes per year. And you would actually see communities with uh, streets lined with kit houses. This is actually from a company out of Saginaw, Michigan called McClure. And these are a street full of McClure kit houses. And then came the 1930s and the Great Depression. And actually, kit house sales didn't fall off until about 1931, even though the Depression started in uh, 1929. It took a couple years for that to really take hold in the economy. Um, and as they did, Sears lost millions of dollars on defaulted mortgages. So people who had bought houses and then lost their jobs and could no longer afford them and uh, lost those to foreclosure. And it's funny how history repeats itself. Montgomery Ward got completely out of the kit house business. And in 1934, Sears briefly closed their modern homes division. But as the depression started to end uh, and the economy recovered, kit house sales started to rebound in the late 1930s. And then World War II broke out. And as that did, um, Sears made the decision to stop offering uh, kit houses through catalog. This was their final catalog from 1940. Um, the war, obviously all the efforts, the wartime efforts for construction and materials went to um, building things for the military not for residential homes. Um, after the war ended, uh, again, we had this uh, return of the soldiers and sailors back to uh, the United States, and suburban residential construction took off again. But people were no longer interested in building the house themselves. They, uh, we saw the development of places like Levittown, where we saw production line or assembly line uh, concepts brought to home building. And people could just walk in and pick a house, uh, a house design, and, and, and literally walk right in the next day um, with, a, with a new home. 
And the construction methods that were uh, adapted to build these giant uh, residential developments really offset the price advantage that kit home manufacturers had had over their competition. Um, and so uh, the kit home era as we knew it really uh, ended uh, in the early 1940s. So one of the most important centers of the kit house industry was Bay City, Michigan. What three things does Bay City have that would lend itself to this sort of thing? Anyone? Lots of lumber. Lots of lumber, yes. Water access. Water access, yes. One more thing. Choo, choo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, railroad the railroad, lines. yes. So Bay, Bay City, Michigan was actually home to three companies, Aladdin, Lewis, and Sterling. And these three companies really had an interesting history. As I mentioned earlier, the Aladdin Company, uh, the, or the North American Construction Company selling homes under the Aladdin brand, started in 1906. Um, the Aladdin Company didn't actually have its own production facilities or mills, so they contracted with a local <coughs> construction company called Lewis to supply the timber uh, and lumber for their homes. Um, and that partnership lasted for a few years and Lewis decided this is a pretty good business. We'd like a little bit more money out of Aladdin, pony up. And Aladdin said, you know what? We're gonna go talk to the folks at International Mill and Timber. And so uh, we're not gonna work with you anymore, Lewis. And Lewis said, well, that's fine. We have an expertise now. We kind of figured out how you're doing this. And so Lewis started selling homes just a few years after Aladdin uh, did once that partnership broke up. And, and as you can maybe guess from this cover, uh, Aladdin's partnership with the uh, International Mill and Timber Company fell on the same rocks. After a few years, uh, they had disagreements and uh, International Mill and Timber said, hey, we'll sell homes under the Sterling brand. Um, over the years, hundreds of thousands of kit homes were manufactured and shipped out of Bay City, uh, primarily by railroad, um, from these three companies to uh, not only sites across the United States, but even overseas. And so really, the Michigan, uh, and Bay City, Michigan in particular, really does kind of have a claim to being the home of the kit home industry in America. And um, there were uh, seven companies that sold nationally, and obviously three of these were based in Michigan. So I touched a little bit on Aladdin. Aladdin probably is the most important just because of the, um, they were the, did a number of firsts. Uh, the two primary people behind Aladdin were uh, two brothers, uh, the two Sovereign brothers uh, pictured above. Um, uh, William Sovereign uh, was kind of the brains behind the kit house concept. And uh, in Bay City in the early 1900s, there were companies selling um, what a product called a knockdown boat. And a knockdown boat was a boat, a wooden boat, that was put together in a factory, and then they literally knocked it down into its uh, individual parts and shipped it to you, and then you as a customer would reassemble this boat and go out on the water with it, which uh, seems kind of a brave, brave thing to do. <laughs> um, the, the Sovereign Brothers figured out, well, if people are willing to buy boats, which really you only can sell in coastal communities or uh, places where you have access to water, homes can be sold anywhere. So why don't we apply the same concepts to homes? And um, his brother Otto was a uh, kind of a marketing genius, and he got the idea, why don't we advertise these houses um, that you can put together yourself in national publications. And so that's what they did. And they really started from nothing. As we mentioned, they didn't have a, a lumber yard or a mill or anything to do this, just the idea. Um, but it, the idea really took off, it exploded. Um, and it's amazing to think that, you know, people sight unseen were just gonna buy a house and then put it together themselves. But in fact, that's what people were willing to do. Um, and in Bay City, Michigan, Aladdin, it was really a company town in some ways for the three kit house companies. Uh, Aladdin built many model homes uh, and also many of the executives and the employees built homes, obviously. Um, so even today, if you go up to Bay City, you'll find numerous examples of 
a wide range of Aladdin houses. It truly is Aladdin town. Uh, I touched a little bit on Lewis. Um, Lewis manufactured kit homes for almost 60 years. Um, so starting in the early 19 teens and then continuing operation until the early 70s. This is an example of an early Lewis model, the San Fernando, which was very popular. And in its later years, you can see the um, transition to what they called Liberty Homes. It was kind of a new brand in the 30s. They started selling with the Depression. Obviously, it was difficult to sell homes. So they transitioned to these much smaller, um, m more modest homes um, and uh, had some success under the Liberty Home brand. And uh, Sterling, again, the International Mill and Timber Company, they sold their homes uh, from 1915 to 1971. So here you can see the Yarlington uh, uh, model from the 20s. And then as the years went on, you could buy a suburban ranch. Um, and in fact, people up through the you know, 50s, 60s, and 70s continued to buy kit homes from all three companies. In fact, all three companies were in operation up until the 70s, Aladdin being the last man standing, as they said, um, finally closing up operations in early 1980s. So who would be crazy enough to buy a house from a catalog? Well, we have to sort of think back to when Montgomery Wards and Sears were the way that you would get anything you wanted. They were trusted. It was not a foreign concept that you would send your money away and get what they told you you were going to get, and they guaranteed your satisfaction. And so it wasn't a stretch to imagine that they could do the very same thing with the house. There were many advantages to buying a kit home. You would save money on material because Aladdin would claim they would bring everything straight from the forest to you, and they cut out the middleman, so they would pass those savings on to you. And the precise machine cuts of wood reduced the lumber waste down to 2%. So their actions would save your bottom line. You would save on labor. Uh, we have a statistic that a modest bungalow averaged 4,000 cuts with a handsaw. So, because you didn't have power tools back then, measure twice, cut once, 4,000 times, or let them do all that cutting, and it would cut down your labor time significantly, which you can see. This was a real world experiment that Sears did, and they tested a carpenter doing it himself versus someone doing it with their pre-cut lumber. And again, you would get these wonderfully designed homes by architects at your disposal. You could just page through the catalog, find something you loved. They would also modify it to your, like ours was reversed. You could have them add on something extra for you for very little or almost no cost. And I love this. They show their architects council, and you can see there's a core of able assistants, including a woman advisor. Aha! Because those are the women who, they're invested in the home. That's where they work and what they want to know, so they were seeking the advice of a woman. Very nice. And they did offer financing. Sears and Wardway did. Aladdin never did. And we'll show you later on what you needed to provide in terms of applying for a loan, and it was very lenient. Oh, and this image shows how silly are you to pay rent. It's like throwing your money in the garbage. You should be buying a home with that very same money. And so those low, easy monthly payments, just like rent, will get you a home and it gives those kitties a chance. So between the two, I would say, um, Sears and Montgomery Ward, they were already advertising experts and there was a strong battle going on between them. Sears had showrooms where you could go see and feel the finishes and how wonderful they were, the colors. There was actually a sales office here in Kalamazoo. Where was that, Andrew? That was right down on Main Street where the Huntington Bank is located today in a storefront. That was the Sears sales office. So it makes sense that you would find Sears houses here. Uh, and they assured if you couldn't go to a sales office and see for yourself, it mattered not because you would still be getting wonderful products from them, they guaranteed. And they had tiny models of the houses so you could imagine what it would be like full size when you got it to your home. And I thought it would be great if I could get a tiny model to bring with me to show you like they did. And I found one on that wonderful site called eBay, which <laughs> is pretty much like buying something from a catalog site on scene. And it is a Sears house. And it came in this kit. Uh, and when it came to me, it said, previous experience recommended. <laughs> And I do not have that, so I wisely found someone who could put it together for me, and it is here. So you can take a look at that. 
I had an expert do that, and it's perfect. So. Oh, and Aladdin said they would pay you a dollar for every knot you found in their wood. They guaranteed it to be that premium that you would find almost no knots in it. And they would also give you a dollar for every prospective customer you let tour your house. Family, friends, strangers, if they paraded through your house, they would pay you a dollar. And I have something right from the front door. They wanted you to know it was an Aladdin home. And lest you forget, this little door knocker announces it. When you raise his arms, it says, Aladdin homes. So I'll pass this around and you can see my little Aladdin. That was a gift they gave their customers for Christmas one year in the 20s. So. So uh, Kalamazoo is home to a number of Sears homes, so we thought, uh, and Sears is the best known of the kit home companies, so we thought we'd look a little bit more in depth at the Sears uh, operations, kit home operations, which operate under the Sears Modern Homes Division. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, they were established in 1908. Sears um, took some time to get around to the idea of selling pre-cut lumber. Aladdin started in 1906. It took Sears 10 years to finally figure out Maybe it's easier for our customers to put houses together if we actually cut everything first for them. Uh, so they did start selling those models in 1916. Um, here is a cover of the very first catalog, Modern Homes catalog that Sears uh, sent out in 1908. Uh, an interesting fact about this house on the cover, uh, it's nowhere inside this, this catalog. <laughs> you, you, you literally could not buy that house from Sears. Um, However, you probably looked through the whole catalog looking for it, so you looked at every page trying to find that one. And, and maybe that was the trick. And of course, I uh, uh, showed this a little bit earlier. This is the final catalog issued in 1940. Um, over the 32 years that Sears issued a Modern Homes catalog, they had more than 370 home models. Um, You'll sometimes see a range of numbers. That's due to the fact that some of the models would change names over the years. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and also that they're, uh, they offered some models in different exterior finishes, such as uh, wood siding or face brick or stucco, and sometimes just change the name around based on that. And they're really essentially the same house. So you see a different number than 370. It, it, there's just some differences in how we count, count those numbers. Um, in 1918, Sears started naming their models. So in the early years, you just got a number assigned to a house model. It was like the C187. And finally, somebody in the marketing department got wise and said, hey, we should give these houses cool names. Where are we going to get names for these houses? Um, if you go through the listing of Sears, names Sears used, um, Rosemary Thornton, who's an expert on Sears houses, uh, has determined that over 100 names for models are towns in Illinois. So Barrington, Illinois, Verona, Illinois, um, you'll see a lot of those Illinois town names as Sears models, which makes sense because Sears was based in Chicago, Illinois. Um, over the years, they sold somewhere between 60 and 70,000 homes. Um, Sears marketing folks like to say over 100,000 homes, but people who have done some research in that have kind of determined that that was a little bit overinflated as the marketing folks like to do. Um, Sears also sold cottages, they sold barns, they sold garages, they sold sheds, and they even sold outhouses if you didn't have a bathroom in your house. And not all the models had bathrooms in, in them. And in the little skit that we did, I asked if ours would have a bathroom because there is a Sears house older than ours on our street. It's the only one that we found in our neighborhood. And that model did not have a bathroom in it. I'm pretty sure it does now, but <laughs> back then. And the crazy thing is, Sears also sold a schoolhouse that showed a place for a future bathroom. So I would hate to be a student in that current school without one. But An important part of the Sears operation was the Norwood Sash and Door Company, which was located in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, Sears had such a demand for millwork and windows and doors that they actually went out and bought this company um, to supply all that material for their, their kit houses. And um, oftentimes you'll see references in shipping materials to Norwood Sash and Door. Um, if you see that, that is a direct connection back to Sears kit houses. So here's a couple examples. This is from the early years. Um, Aladdin, when they started out, started with very small, modest house designs. Sears went big. They said, you know what? We're going we're gonna to make a huge splash. 
And so you'll oftentimes see very large houses in these early years, very ornate, uh, a lot of interior decoration. Um, you can see the kind of a strange mix of architectural styles, some throwbacks even to Victorian uh, turrets going on there. Um, by the 1920s, uh, Sears picked up on the whole arts and craft uh, styles that really kind of swept the country and the bungalow house style. Um, you can see that reflected in these houses. Um, also, Sears had a, a, a lot of people who purchased from Sears catalog lived on farms. And for example, this Hillrose model was designed specifically for a farmstead. In the 1930s, again with the Depression, you can see up in the top left the low cost homes, small, very modest, uh, but what people could afford at the time. You also see the uh, English Tudor influence there in the top right. And then on the uh, bottom, uh, uh, popular 1930s styles, Cape Cod, um, colonial styles that um, really matched what um, was the popular taste of the time. And that really was a consistent theme with all the kit house manufacturers. They sold houses that appealed to the broadest taste. If a model didn't sell, it didn't stay in the catalog. Um, if it kept selling, they kept it around. And so as uh, people's tastes evolved over the decades, um, you lost the arts and craft style and you picked up these more, uh, I would say obviously less detailed, uh, a little bit more streamlined styles you see in the 30s. Now this is an example of what you would often see uh, all the, uh, in the catalog. All the houses had their own page. It included an exterior view, um, the price of the house. Uh, the interior floor plans for the house, and then a list of all the different options and extras that you could get with the house. Um, depending on the size of the house um, and the, the kind of the cost uh, point for that house, uh, there could be quite a range of extras that you could select and, and add for a fairly minimal cost, at, at least it would appear at these prices. Um, here's an interior view of the Fullerton, so this house shown on the left. And we'd like to point out that many, many of the interior shots, you'll find a piano. Because this was before TV, and piano was a source of entertainment, and you weren't a well-rounded household if someone did not know how to play the piano. So my little model has a piano out on the porch. It was just delivered. It's going <laughs> to get moved in. So I made sure it was complete that way. And we, we mentioned in the introduction, reverse floor plans were an option. So depending on how your lot was oriented, you may want to have a reverse floor plan. Sears offered that at no extra charge. So the steps of ordering your kit house were actually fairly straightforward. The first thing you do is request a catalog, which Sears would send you. Uh, in the early years, it cost you a dollar. Uh, later on, um, you could go to a sales office and get one for free. Um, you would then review the range of models and prices. And then you would submit a, a request for a quote from Sears for the house model that you wanted and then any of the options or extras or changes that you wanted. They really did encourage customers to customize the houses to fit their needs. So if there was some change that you wanted to make in the floor plan or in the materials that were being provided, you could place that request. It was usually a, uh, an extra cost, but not normally, depending on what you were requesting, a significant cost, and they would include that in the quote that they provided to you. So this is a question we often get, how much did a kit house cost? This example is the ferry. Uh, the ferry was uh, at the lower end of the price scale for a Sears house. You can see uh, this is in the early 20s, $945. Um, which you're like, wow, that's a steal. Um, of course, we have to keep it in perspective. You know, It wasn't long before this that people were going to Detroit to work in Henry Ford's factory for $5 a day. Um, so $945 was not a small sum, um, but it wasn't an extravagant sum, and it was one that many people could afford. At the upper end was a model like the Lexington, $4,228. Uh, and again, the Lexington was really near the top of the Sears uh, kit house line in terms of prices. And again, <laughs> he lives in that. The, these days, you know, you'll hear some of these square footage, footages for some of these houses, and you're like, eh, that's, that's not that big a house. But back then, 
uh, some of the higher end Sears houses were huge. I mean, people were like, well, what are you going to do with all that space? Um, of course, they didn't have a lot of closet space either, so that's something that a lot of people who own houses of that era, like we do, we notice significantly. Um, in addition to your house, this was the base price of your house, and then you had things like plumbing, um, heating, and electrical, which were not included. So those were an extra cost. So um, when you totaled it all up, um, it would include things, uh, the, the total cost would include things um, beyond just what's quoted in the catalog here. Um, but the selling point was, even at that cost, you could get a larger house with higher quality finishes in a modern design at a cost that was either comparable or less than, that, than what somebody building it locally for you could do. Um, and so if you look at these kind of base numbers, once you factor in things like the cost of your lot, the uh, basement foundation, which you had to build yourself, um, and labor costs, that the total cost would be about two to three times what was listed in the catalog. So if the ferry was a little under $1,000, your total cost to build that house would probably be about $3,000. The Lexington, uh, uh, two to $3,000. The Lexington might be eight to $12,000. Um, and we've seen some numbers, um, some source uh, uh, documentation from back in the day that really kind of confirms, it, confirms those numbers. So what were the extras that you could get? Here's your Hercules Pipeless Furnace. It's a giant coal-powered heat belching furnace. Single register. Single register. All does is shoot a giant stream of hot air up into your house. And it probably was quite scary. I would imagine it would be making noise and it's giant, but the ad there says that it, you should not be intimidated by it. It has great bars that are operated by a simple mechanism that a woman or boy can easily operate. So, so we know who's in charge of the heating plant at home. <laughs> uh, here's some examples. So you, uh, the, generally the woman of the house was the one making the selections in some of these areas. So here are some of the options in terms of the electrical fixtures that you could get. Sears offered a different number of different styles. Here's plumbing. Yes. Indoor water and toilets were actually not uh, common in every community that Sears sold to. Um, and so this was some new, newfangled uh, ideas here. This uh, indoor uh, bathtub, well bathtub would be inside but the toilet um, and running water. You could also purchase garages. Many people did. Um, and if you wanted to get fancy, you could add a sunroom onto the side of your house. Some models came with a sunroom as part of the house design, but if yours didn't and it could accommodate it, you could purchase it for only $269 additional. So, here is your information blank. So as a customer, you get the catalog at home, you figure out, I'm going to buy myself a Hamilton. And you fill out this form, you tell them what kind of heating system you want, hot water, steam, warm air furnace, um, pipeless warm air furnace. Uh, you can indicate what kind of lighting fixtures you want, and if you need plumbing, or in storm doors and storm windows. Put your name, your address, so your closest railroad depot, and you send that off to Sears. On the back side is your easy payment plan information blank. So if you wanted Sears to help finance your house and get a mortgage, you had to provide all this information right here. <laughs> Do you hold legal title to the lot or land? Okay. How much did that land cost you? How much did you pay? Is your street paved? Do you have a sidewalk? Water, sewer, gas, electricity? How much cash will you have to invest in that uh, deal? And how much can you pay each month? And what is your occupation? Folks, that's it. You could buy, your, get yourself a mortgage, that little bit of information. What's very interesting about this is Sears did not ask whether you were a man or a woman, didn't ask what race or nationality you were, didn't ask if you were a recent immigrant. As long as you had cash to pay, Sears could finance you. And so, uh, Back in this era, it was often difficult or impossible for uh, women and minorities and immigrants to get financing from local banks. And so Sears became a way to finance the purchase of a home as long as your 
uh, cash was uh, green, uh, Sears was happy to do that for you. And here's an example of a form that's filled out. It's a little bit hard to read, but essentially this is uh, a quote from Sears for a particular house. Um, has all the details. This is a Valonia model house. Um, I believe this is going to uh, Park Ridge, Illinois. and even has financing and how much that financing would cost per month. And once the customer uh, completed this and sent this back to Sears, uh, they started the process of building the kit house. So building your kit house. These are the items that would come with your order uh, for your kit house. Uh, the build materials for modern homes. Framing and lumber and siding, pre-cut. Roofing materials including gutters, <laughs> flooring, going. millwork doors, windows, including the hardware that went with them, so sashes, um, uh, glass obviously. Lath or wall board. Sears was an early innovator in the idea of um, what we consider drywall today. They sold a product um, that was very similar. It was a plaster-based product, but was much easier to put up than um, traditional lath and plaster. Uh, it saved quite a bit of time. Nails that came by the keg. <laughs> All your interior and exterior paints and finish in the colors that you requested. Sears could suggest you could pick whatever you wanted. Um, and some models included extras like cabinetry and built-ins. Um, again, depending on how much you wanted to spend, you could upgrade your house to include uh, built-in uh, cupboards, uh, bookshelves, uh, things like that. Not included in your order were plaster, bricks, and foundation blocks. These were all things you had to obtain locally, so this added to the total cost of your house. They were too expensive to ship by rail, didn't really make sense for Sears to do that, so you were directed to get those from a local uh, supply yard. And while you were waiting for your order to arrive, you had homework. Yes, you had to dig your own basement, you had to construct your foundation. If you didn't want to buy those supplies from your local supplier, you could ooh, invest in the wizard block making machine. <laughs> Here you see a man industriously working, and it sort of looks like reverse evolution. He's getting tireder and tireder the more he works. And if you really wanted to ramp up your, con your construction, you could invest in the one minute concrete batch mixer. So you would really be cranking them out there. And Sears did require the basement and that foundation if you were getting a mortgage through them. And then your materials would arrive by rail. And you see them, this is a Pacific Ready Cut, they're a different company, how they efficiently load that boxcar to fit as much material as possible in there. And Aladdin shows where they put each of your materials. They would put the materials in very specifically so that the things you needed first when you unload will end up on top. So that's what you would take away. And I hope you had lots of friends and family that would help you because you had 48 hours to unload this boxcar and get it over to your property because that's what the railroad required. They needed to use that for something else. And this, remember, this is in the, this, you didn't have a semi-truck that would pull up and you would load all this lumber on. You might have a horse and wagon or you might have an early uh, flatbed truck. Um, you're doing a lot of trips. And you built it yourself by that book. How to erect your Wardway Ready Cut Home is just 70 pages. They said any person of average skill or ability would be able to do this. I wonder if people today have different average skills and abilities than they had back then. And it says, you are entering into a pleasant enterprise, the erection of a Wardway Ready Cut Home. No matter how many buildings you may have built, it is absolutely necessary that you read these instructions before <laughs> any of the work is started. So don't be jumping to page 12, because that's interesting. No. And Sears advise, don't take anyone's advice as to how this building should be assembled. No, because passersby would probably be very interested and have their own ideas. No, follow the manual. Otherwise, your house might look a little different than the picture. So if you were building it yourself, which many people did, uh, owner-built home would typically take about three to six months to complete. Hopefully, you had somewhere to live while you were building that. We've read a number of stories about uh, Prospective Sears kit house builders living in garages and barns and friends' house. Um, and often family and friends were roped into helping this uh, task. And here you see this is a Sears Rembrandt in Ann Arbor under construction. This is actually built by a college professor and his uh, friends. And the final product. Not too bad for DIY. 
So we're going to talk a little bit about how we identify kit homes. Um, it's a challenge. If you think about it, some of these houses are now over 100 years old. Um, most have had many owners. Um, they've gone through a lot. They've uh, often had additions and changes made to them. And so um, finding these homes can sometimes be a challenge. So one of the things we do is if we're driving around or if we're driving around online, I love Google Street View, um, we'll look at houses and look for exterior hints. So first things we're looking for are, does the house that I'm looking at match the house in the catalog? Does the roof line and the chimney match? Do the windows, if they're still original, match the windows in the catalog? Do they have columns? See these columns on the porch? These were uh, not unique to Sears, but they're very distinctive to Sears. It's one of those things that, you know, we hit the brakes on the car. Whoa, okay, that might be a Sears house. Um, likewise, these five-piece eave bracket down in the bottom right corner uh, is a distinctive Sears kit house element. Uh, and then we also look where these houses are located. Are they near railroads? Generally, the houses were. What's the age of the neighborhoods? We look, like to look in neighborhoods that have homes from the 20s and 30s, generally. Um, were they near a sales office? For instance, a city like Kalamazoo that had a sales office likely had a number of homes from Sears or one of the other kit home companies. Um, or are we aware of corporate customers who purchased a large number of kit homes and had them built in the, in the community? Those are all uh, ways that we can help identify them. So this is an example of that stamped lumber that that would help you erect your house properly if you're paying attention. And that stairs right there, you can hardly see, it's a little blur. We see that every day when we come into our house because that's our stamped lumber. And I suspect that if you're following the manual, you should have flipped it and put the stamp on the bottom. But um, maybe someone down the road decided they wanted to expose it and show it, so that was nice. And the upper right is we redid our bathroom, and when we pulled down, the, none of it was original, so don't feel bad. We didn't do anything wrong. But when we pulled down the, the drywall, we saw that stamp, so we took a picture of it before we covered it back up. Some companies used more descriptive, like this one says it's a rafter, that's from Aladdin. Ours are just numbers. And then that SR is the logo for Sears Roebuck that some bathtubs would be uh, having. You have to remember though, Sears sold many things to many people. Just because you have something they made in your house doesn't necessarily mean they made your whole house. And then there on the stairwell, you can see that upright block. That is a telltale sign. They were used very often to help a novice carpenter deal with angles. So you didn't have to try to match up two angle cuts, it went, oh, horse. So this block helps you as you're working on your home. Hardware, yes, is another sign. We have that doorknob, that's ours. We have a few more in our house. We're still looking for the keys. I don't know where they went, but maybe they're down in the wall somewhere. And again, Sears sold hardware to many people, so you're not 100% sure that that would be a Sears kit house if it has that. So if you're really lucky and you're a homeowner, you'll have a set of Sears blueprints. Um, that's kind of a gold standard. If you can show me a set of Sears blueprints for a house, I'm pretty sure I can guarantee that your house is a Sears kit house. Um, we also often see shipping labels. Um, again, Sears shipped a lot of building materials separate from their kit house sales, and so a shipping label by itself isn't a guarantee that your house is from Sears, but it does make it more likely. It's the kind of thing we piece together several different, uh, several different things, and a shipping label is a way that helps us identify a kit house. Mortgages and deeds are another interesting way that you can authenticate a Sears kit house. So because Sears and Wardway and uh, McClure, which is the company out of uh, Saginaw, Michigan, uh, which there may be examples of houses locally, did do financing, you will find records of that in the mortgages. Um, you have to go to the county to the Register of Deeds. Um, they probably have old dusty books or reproduction uh, or typed up indexes of um, records. What you're looking for are these names. So for Sears, Walker O. Lewis and E. Harrison Powell are the ones we see most frequently. Wardway were always financed under Thomas P. Riordan. If you can find the original mortgage or deed for your house and it has these names on it, 
It means your house was financed through Sears or Wardway or McClure um, and almost guarantees that you have a kit house. And this is an example of, this is from Washtenaw County. Uh, this is a mortgage abstract. And um, for, this is actually in the collection at the Bentley Historical Library at the University of Michigan. This is like the ha ah! <laughs> moment for a kit house researcher. <laughs> there are, I think, five or seven Walker L. Lewis's on this page, and then several Thomas Riordans. Um, and so from this, we get a property description. We match the property description to a current address. And we drive there and we say, please be a house, please be a house. Um, and most of the time there is, and it's usually a house that we recognize. Um, so if you're interested in authenticating your house, if you happen to own one, um, this is one way to do it. And this is an example of our house, the mortgage on our house. So the Salos, Floyd Salo actually bought this house, as, uh, or financed the house as a single man. He got married shortly thereafter. Uh, and that was their first thing they did together as husband and wife was build a house. Um, you can see he financed this for $2,950 and that worked out to a monthly mortgage payment of $15 a month. And the date on this document is April 1st, which would have given me pause, but they went through with it. So this is a little test. This is why it's challenging for us. Many of the companies sold models that looked very similar or the same. So we have the Sears Barrington, the Wordway Maywood, and the Aladdin Newcastle. So we're going to test it. Which one is it? I'm going to put this house up here, and then I'm going to let you guess which one you think it is. Now don't yell it out. We'll do this, <laughs> we'll do this the school way. So who thinks, look, take a minute to look at these, this house, and then look at the three examples up there. Kind of study the details there. I'm showing you the front. Who thinks this is the Sears Barrington? Raise your hand. Okay, we've got a few for Sears Barrington. Who thinks this is the middle one, the Wardway Maywood? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, a couple. Who thinks this is the Aladdin Newcastle? A lot Ooh. of folks for Aladdin. Okay. Who's confused? <laughs> okay, good. It's challenging. This is us. We drive up, we're like, hmm, this is actually a Sears Barrington. And we have a mortgage for this. This is actually located in Berkeley, Michigan. So I know it's from Sears. Um, but this is, this is what we face. This was another interesting house. So uh, one of the first presentations we did on kit houses was in Northville, Michigan. And this is a house on Grace Street in Northville. And my first instinct was, aha, Sears Mitchell. And then we started doing some research. And we started looking. And we said, well, you know what? Let's go to the presentation and we'll put a big question mark on this. And so as part of the presentation, the owner of the house had come. And they had something in their hands that said at the top, Honor Built Modern Homes. So that was a Sears Mitchell. And that was really exciting. You don't see that very often. And actually, they had not had those blueprints when they moved into the house. Uh, the, the children of the original owners came to the house and gave them uh, the blueprints. They had kept those. So other sources of information. Historical societies sometimes feature these in their tours or their literature. You can find that there. Museums often have literature. The catalogs themselves are a great source of information because they would love to tell you how satisfied customers were. So if you finished your house and you loved it and you wrote them a letter, I love my house, my neighbors look at it all the time. They would feature your house in, the in future catalogs and say, no, by Michigan, that's where it was built. You can go see it. So yes, books and newspapers are a great place to come. Uh, the library has lots of good information for you, of course. Websites are many times helpful and many times accurate. Owners and neighbors sometimes know what they have and they will be glad to share information with you. Real estate listings oftentimes will boast about the fact that it's a Sears house or Aladdin. Oops. Okay. And we've also found sometimes obituaries are a good source of information because if they built that themselves, that was a great accomplishment and they will say, they lived in that house, they built themselves their whole lives. And so that's a good tip for us to find. Okay. So yes. now we get to move on to seeing some actual houses. 
Um, and you can see we did a map. Uh, it actually doesn't have all the houses that we found because we found a couple at the last minute. Um, just how it goes. Um, but you can see uh, we have a, quite a few in, uh, in and around the city of Kalamazoo and in that some of the outlying communities. So we'll just walk our way through those showing you some examples. And we always have to put this disclaimer up front. So we've just explained to you how difficult it can be to identify a Sears house. These are our best guess based on the information that we have. Um, we were fortunate, uh, Sharon Ferraro um, shared a number of homes with us um, and helped put us in contact with some owners who were able to provide us with information about their houses. So that always makes life a little bit easier with, uh, uh, for us. Um, and we didn't do a citywide survey, which we've done in some other communities. Um, Kalamazoo is a big city with a lot of old houses, which is great, um, but we haven't driven up and down every street in Kalamazoo yet. So uh, I, I'm sure I can guarantee you there are a lot more kit houses out there that we haven't seen. Um, and we're pretty sure on most of these, but until I, somebody puts a mortgage record or a blueprint in my hand, sometimes I'm going to hedge. So that's our hedge, but we're pretty confident about most of, most of these. So the first house I want to show you is the Sears Sunbeam, um, which was offered uh, for several years in the 1920s. And um, the Sunbeam actually was a variation on an earlier model called the Elmwood. And you can see the Sunbeam had an enclosed porch. That was the major change to that house. So the catalog says it has five rooms and one bath. It sold for, well, at its peak, 27.16. Here, this one says 24.25. So, as the years went on, they would get more expensive, of course. It presents a welcoming facade to the street, but coyly placed stairs to the porch give it a more reserved aura. The dining room and living room are well lit with windows on two sides. And this is a Sears Sunbeam on Madison. Um, it's an award-winning, a preservation award-winning project where they um, completely restored this house. The sun got us a little bit on this angle. This is a little bit better. You can see some of the detail. Um, but let me go back here. You can see how well, with the preservation restoration of that house, how well that detail matches that original catalog image. Um, you don't often see that level of consistency between the two just because of changes over the years. So um, that's, really, that's really great to see that. Um, and one more view of that. And again, you can see that enclosed porch upstairs. Um, and then those columns on the front and brackets. Very nice looking house. Yeah. Yeah, and, that, it, it, and as, as customer, again, Sears kind of left it open to you. Uh, which options you wanted to choose. It really came down to how much you wanted to pay and what features you wanted included with the house. A very popular model, the Sears Crescent, was offered for uh, 13 years. So any house that was offered for over a decade likely is among the most popular models that Sears offered because customers kept buying them and Sears kept selling them. They're very distinctive, um, although there are some look-alikes to this. So there are some uh, some companies that sold houses that look like the Crescent. Um, this is Crescent, it's on Cherry Street. And um, you can see those, uh, the very distinctive window arrangement on the front windows. See how they're, they're not like your traditional, uh, you know, kind of half and half, um, and neither vertically nor horizontally there. And that massive kind of arch porch and here's a side view. Uh, interesting little details. The Crescent came in two floor plans. The smaller of the two floor plans had two columns on the porch. The larger had three columns. Um, not having actually measured this house, I'm going with smaller floor plan based on that detail, but um, that's one way to distinguish between the two different floor plans is the number of columns on the porch. This is the owner here in this room. Oh, I, I did meet her. I was taking pictures of her house. And she's very kind. She knew what she had, and yes. So if she's here, I wanted to thank her for kindly letting me snap these pictures. Did you have a thing for that? No. Okay. Uh, next one is Sears number 155. Um, this is an early model Sears house, and this is an interesting house for us because the um, owner has uh, uh, stamped 
lumber, and marked lumber, um, a, a kind of variety of different things that uh, help identify Sears houses. What I really love about this sequence of photos down here in the bottom right is this is a picture from the 70s, kind of showing the house when it was then. And then somebody added onto the front, and um, I'm not sure exactly what that is, maybe an additional porch. Um, and then the current owners went in and took that off, and you get this view. And then they said, you know what, let's go back to the original open porch. And all the way back, and a big dumpster full of material there that all that, but that original porch was all hiding underneath what had been there. Um, and then looks like this today. And um, again, some changes from the original, and this is what makes it challenging. These houses get to be 100 years old, and people add on things, and the siding changes. Um, so it's really, it's really great to see folks like this and the sunbeam try to take them back to their original look. Um, and using uh, close to the original materials, um, really Im impressive. And then this is Canton, Ohio, and here's Wendy just double checking with Houses by Mail. Yeah, that's it. Houses by Mail is kind of, this is like a field guide to Sears Houses. It's kind of our uh, go-to book when we're trying to identify houses. And there's a magnolia, and here's another view of this house in Canton, beautifully restored. This house was literally falling down um, when the current owners bought it. It's been, they've owned it for I think 25 or 30 years now um, and have completely restored it and it's just a beautiful looking house. And it's actually on a corner a lot so you can walk right up to the side of the house. And wait, there's more, we're almost done. Um, <laughs> We visited the summer Carlinville, Illinois. Uh, the Standard Oil uh, Company built 152 Sears houses in a tw uh, 12 block area. So literally an entire neighborhood of eight different Sears models kind of alternating as you go through the neighborhood. So as you drive the street, there's nothing, we don't have to ID stuff. Sears house, Sears house, Sears house, Sears house. Um, so that's a really fun place uh, if you're ever down that way to just kind of drive through. I will say they are working on uh, restoring that area. It's very much a um, very much a work in progress in Carlinville, but they really do value their Sears houses. The people who live in the neighborhood. Uh, Elgin, Illinois, has the largest number of documented Sears houses. So this is where they've authenticated them through mortgages or blueprints or other information. Um, Cincinnati, Ohio, and the suburbs. Uh, more than you'll find more than 500 Sears homes. And Wendy and I were down there this summer. And literally, we kept getting lost in Cincinnati. If you've ever been down there, there's a lot of hills, a lot of windy streets. Didn't matter. Whatever street we turned on had a Sears house. Um, that's also where Norwood Sash and Door was located. So we think a lot of that is uh, local support or employees uh, building houses from uh, Sears supplies. And then finally, Aladdin sent 252 homes to Birmingham, England, uh, purchased for workers of the Austin Motor Company. Um, and so if you go over to Birmingham, England, haven't been over there yet to visit, but there's a whole neighborhood just of Aladdin kit houses. And the folks who helped us out with photos. And the final thing I'll say, we are online. We have a website at www.kithousehunters.com. I've also been writing blog posts. I've gotten into blogging that you can follow a link from that website to Kit House Hunters that blogspot.com where I blog about kit houses mostly in Michigan but ha do have done some kit houses unique kit houses elsewhere in the country that we found um, so if you're interested in that and there's also a Facebook group that all they do is post Sears examples of Sears and other kit houses so if you're on Facebook go to the kithousehunters.com website there's or actually the blog um, follow that to the Facebook group, get signed up there, and you'll get your fill of, of kit houses. Uh, and that's our presentation for this evening. <laughs>